Hello everyone, welcome uh, to this lecture. In this lecture, we will discuss about introduction to switch capacitor circuits. Uh, so this, uh, the figure what you are seeing now uh, is a signal processing system. And in the signal processing system, uh, we have uh, various components um, through sensors. The analog signal is uh, sensed, which is converted into digital by the interface electronics, mm, which is actually ADC uh, in this side. And once your continuous time, continuous amplitude signals are converted into discrete time, discrete amplitude signal, it is processed. After processing, which is converted back into continuous time and continuous amplitude by another interface electronics, which is known as DAC. Finally, through actuators, uh, uh, it is given. Now, if you see the process of converting continuous time, continuous amplitude signals into discrete time, discrete amplitude, which is CTCA to DTDA, it, it is a two-step process. And the very basic process is sampling in this, sampling, in the process of sampling. And whenever we say sampling, sampling is done uh, as per Nyquist's theorem. And the theorem says that if the signal content has a bandwidth of B hertz, it can be sampled at twice uh, the signal content frequency, which is 2B hertz without any loss of information. Now, for our course, uh, what is important here is how to uh, do sampling uh, using circuits. So, the very basic circuit is a switch and a capacitor, uh, where the capacitor is the analog memory, which can store analog signals. So, using switches, which is operated using a clock uh, at discrete intervals, the values from the analog signal is sampled and hold in the capacitor. Now, how to realize a switch uh, in our case is by using a MOSFET. And MOSFET is driven by a clock signal here, which varies from 0 to VDD. Uh, since the gate of the MOSFET is varying from 0 to VDD, when the gate signal is at 0, MOSFET is off. And when the gate signal is connected to VDD, uh, since the gate is having a very high voltage, MOSFET will be driven into a linear region of operation. During linear region of operation, VDS is very small and V out will be following V in. So, whenever switch is on, that is when clock is high, V out will be equal to V in and this is actually the sampling mode. And whenever uh, clock is low, a V out is supposed to hold the previous value which is detected when the clock is on, that is known as hold mode. So, these are the two modes of operation of a very basic sampling circuit. Uh, now, <clears throat> since the MOSFET is acting as a uh, as a switch in linear region, it can be replaced by a resistance R, where the value of R is given by 1 by mu and C ox W by VGS minus VT. Now, if you uh, see the sampling circuit closely, uh, we can understand some problems which is associated with the sampling circuit. The first one is, if you look at this term VGS, where gate is connected to VDD and ES is actually V in, the voltage which is connected there, uh, the resistance here is a signal dependent resistance or the, the value of the resistance varies, a value of the signal varies when uh, your V in varies. As V in varies, the signal also will vary. So, we can always see a signal dependent resistance here and as a result, uh, uh, again, since the resistance, uh, the since R is varying, or I can say uh, there is a bandwidth limitation for the sampling circuit because again the bandwidth of this circuit dip is equal to one by two pi R C. Uh, it depends on R. So if R increases, bandwidth will decrease. So there is a bandwidth limitation here. Now an option here is to increase bandwidth. What I can do is you can increase W by L. Uh, by uh, so that you can reduce resistance and thereby increase bandwidth. But even this is not a, a feasible solution that we will see a little later uh, why uh, bandwidth can be improved by increasing the W by L ratio. And another problem with the switch is whenever we use NMOS as a switch, the maximum signal which can be connected to the input is VDD minus VT or input uh, NMOS is a poor conductor of 1 can conduct a little VDD minus VT. So, uh, yeah. So, if you look at uh, this particular circuit diagram, 
we can find these are the problems with this there is a signal dependent resistance but there is a limitation for the bandwidth and amplitude also will be distorted even if if the input signal goes beyond vdt minus vt now that problem can be resolved by using a p mosfet where i can uh, conduct a strong one but if the input voltage is lesser than vt it will be a problem in that case we can use the combination of nmos and pmos which is a transmission gate switch which is driven by using uh, clocks phi and phi bar so at the when phi is high phi bar will be low and both the devices will be on and uh, nmos will help in conduction from 0 to vdt minus vt and the rest will be taken care by p mosfet now if you look at the resistance of this particular switch uh, it is a parallel combination of on resistance of n mosfet and p mosfet which are given by these two equations and if you plot the on resistance of n mosfet it will be uh, initially when your input is equal to 0 there will be a resistance which is the starting value and as your v in uh, increases uh, the denominator term is actually reducing as a result r on will increase and whenever your v in equal to vdd minus vt your resistance will be uh, as asymptotically uh, reaching uh, no it will be uh, leading to it will be reaching infinity similarly p mosfet uh, whenever your input is equal to uh, vtp the resistance is infinity and as your input increases resistance is coming out so the total resistance is uh, this resistance given in this pink color which is a parallel combination of nmos and pmos resistance so even here uh, definitely we can say there is a signal dependent resistance uh, again bandwidth also is it is finite uh, but uh, to some extent um, the r1 value is less and if the r1 value is less bandwidth could be more but still there is a limitation on that uh, now the distortion the previous problem uh, is resolved at this point but anyway uh, since uh, the since we are using mosfets the noise associated with MOSFET will come into picture and uh, if you remember in the noise uh, chapter we have studied about a noise associated with the RC same thing um, because the MOSFET now is uh, equivalent as a resistance so you can expect all the KT by C noise associated with the circuit over here so these are some of the problems associated with the sampling and sampling circuit during sampling mode now we look at the problems as so, uh, problems uh, now we'll um, particularly look at the whole phase of operation now um, if you look at this clock say this is the clock phi during sampling phase uh, in output will be connected to input uh, because the transistor turns on uh, by a channel present a channel will be present and during the falling edge of this clock whatever value is connected to v in that will be uh, held in the capacitor during the rest of the hold phase so this is actually uh, this is uh, actually the hold phase of uh, the circuit now whenever the transistor uh, switches from high to low the the charges in the channel also should uh, disappear or the charges in the channel also should uh, be removed from the channel then only transistor can turn off now the question is uh, when the transistor uh, take this transition from high to low um, the charges in the channel should be uh, removed or should be um, uh, should be removed from the channel then only the transistor can turn off uh, now there are two options either the charges can go and um, through the capacitor or either the charges can go to the input side source now these two when we analyze these two possibilities um, if your input impedance the input impedance of the source if it is zero ideally if if, you are, if the input impedance is zero definitely all the charges in the channel will be absorbed by the source and the mosfet will turn off now if if the input impedance is infinity very high all the charges will be dumped to the capacitor because there is there are only two parts one is through source another is through the capacitor now these two things are ideal cases so definitely uh, impedance of the source will be somewhere in between the value in that case uh, the charges there are chances that charges uh, will be dumped to the capacitor here now the capacitor is holding a value which is sampled during the sample phase and which should be preserved and this value should be given for further processing 
Now, if the additional charges which is present in the channel are dumped to this capacitor, the previously stored values are getting disturbed or um, there are some error values coming into picture. Now, we will see why we are concerned about this extra charges which is dumped to the capacitor from the channel. Uh, now, if you look at the sampling phase of operation, the charges in the channel can be expressed as QCH is equal to uh, C ox is actually the uh, charges per unit area multiplied by total area of the uh, transistor is WL. So, this is the total capacitance multiplied by VGS minus VT is the uh, voltage in the channel. So, the channel charge uh, can be written as WL C ox into VGS is VDD minus V in minus VT. Now, what, what is happening here is the charges in the channel uh, depends on <clears throat> the charges in the channel uh, vary or it depends on input voltage. So, as input varies, charges in the channel also varies. Now, at each instant of input, input, if the charges are different, the dumping of charges to this capacitor also will be different. So, that creates a error in the values which is stored in the capacitor. So, the problem here is unknown fraction of charge is dumped to the whole capacitor during the clock cycle which is during the uh, instant when the switches um, when the transistor clock switch from high to low. So, this problem is known as channel charge injection problem or simply charge injection problem. So, whenever MOSFET turns off the charges in the channel will be dumped to the capacitor and this charges are varying as your input varies. So, this is a source of error and this problem is known as channel charge injection problem. Now, how to get rid of, get rid of this channel charge injection problem uh, is, so the, <clears throat> the thing is whenever the, this MOSFET turns off, if the charges in the channel are seeing a path through the capacitor, definitely the charges will, uh, will be dumped to the capacitor. Now, the idea is uh, whenever this MOSFET turns off, the charges sh should not see a path here. For that, what we can do is, we can add another uh, transistor over here. Now, if a transistor is here and if this transistor is turned off just before this transistor turns off. So, you can see here clearly, the yellow is the clock which is connected to the switch A. I am calling this a switch A. And green is the um, clock which is connected to switch B. Now, if I need to uh, preserve the values which is stored in the capacitor during the sampling phase, the charges in the channel should not be dumped to this capacitor or the charges should not see a path through this capacitor when this transistor turns off. To make sure that before this transistor turns off, the transistor B is turned off so that the charges will not further see a path and the value stored in the capacitor will be preserved. So, this method of uh, removing the charge, uh, the eliminating the charge injection problem is known as bottom plate sampling. Since we are using another switch and the bottom plate of this capacitor. Now, you can clearly analyze these three uh, diagrams. When both transistors are on, this is the condition. Now, uh, the first is uh, before this turns off, B will turn off. So, this is the condition. So, the charges will not further see a path. And finally, um, when both are off, the capacitor is this. Now, this capacitor uh, have the value which is sampled during the previous phase and we need to see how I can process further the value which is stored in this capacitor. So, that will be uh, seen in the next lecture. Thank you.